All right, let's jump to the NFL and let's jump to London, actually. Uh, we've got another early game. This one features the Bears and the Jaguars. It will be the Jaguars next week as well. So they're hanging out for a couple of weeks. Uh, some were taking note that there were travel issues, but it doesn't sound like it was too bad. And it's still a routine for Jacksonville. They know exactly what to do when they get there. They're not going to be confused. Been there, done that. I wouldn't give them home field but they should have more support because there's a bit of a base there as far as Jacksonville Jaguars fans. The Jags got bet yesterday. So this got up to two and a half. The Bears favored on this, quote, neutral field, and then it came down. We're now at one and a half with a total of 44 and the hook. Jacksonville coming off their first win of the season. Uh, their backup running back, maybe he should be the starter. Maybe that will be the switch there, Tank Bigsby terrific last week and a lot of the chatter about the injury report is it, there's been some bad news on the bear side but on the Jacksonville Jaguars side I guess we'll find out today about Tyson Campbell because that is potentially a big return in that secondary for them uh the bears are you know the hot team their offense is getting better the rookie quarterback improving from week to week but you know what he had to improve because if he didn't against two of the worst defenses in the NFL with the Panthers and the Rams, like people were going to be coming out and just smoking them, and they they would have certainly deserved it. Bears have a great defense. I'd say it's a work in progress on offense, and the Bears are the favorite here. A lot of the speculation, Sam, something we've been talking about for a couple of years. For some reason, Doug Peterson would never say who's calling the plays. Is it himself? or press Taylor. It's probably going back and forth, but there is a lot of speculation. You're watching the sideline last week that it was Doug with his butt on the line when they were winless last week calling the plays, and it was an offensive explosion, 8.7 yards per play. What are you doing here? I like Jacksonville in the game, and I think one of the big losses for the Bears in this game is its safety. You know, safety play is sort of – its I don't want to say it's more important than it's been, but – these great teams in the NFL mostly have good play at safety. And to miss Jaquan Brisker, who's out with a concussion, that's a big deal for them. They also have some issues, you know, uh, Zach Pickens on the D-line is out. Their, uh, their nickel guy, Tyreek Stevenson, he's going to be out. It looks like he's doubtful. So you're starting to see some guys on that defense show up on the injury report. I think Brisker's a huge loss because he is so good at getting into the box and negating the run. So you take him out, it changes their second level of their defense. It's not like they can't beat Jacksonville without Brisker, but it's certainly a loss. Um, I actually, you know, it's funny to even say this out loud. In terms of a power rating, I have Jacksonville higher than Chicago. It is what it is. Okay. And I'm sure a lot of people are in that same ballpark as me. So when Chicago gets to two, two and a half, you're thinking, okay, is this just recency bias or is this – a really good feel on the ratings. I, I think it's more of the recency bias, to be honest, because the Bears have have looked better. Caleb just played his best game of the season. But then you look at who they played. The Rams, who are dead, and the Panthers, who have been dead for <laughs> how long? You know, years in this league. This is a step up in competition, whether people want to realize it or not. And you can't just look at Jacksonville's win-loss record. You, you can't. You, you look at what they are as a team and what their potential is. And look, Jacksonville could have beat Houston. Jacksonville was up on Houston. The Bears never really had a chance against Houston. Yeah, they had the ball late, but you knew they weren't going to come back and beat Houston. Jacksonville right. dominated Houston for two, three quarters. And then Houston rallies back and wins that game. So they do have a common opponent. Jacksonville was better than Chicago was. And Jacksonville's also made this trip as an organization. They know the ins and outs of London. They've made this trip several times. So I I just – I don't think the Bears should be favored in London. I don't. It's not to say that they can't win because, obviously, it's a coin flip game. Um, I think the Jacksonville teaser pieces are good, too, from plus one and a half to plus seven and a half. I don't think Chicago is going to win this game. I don't. I could be wrong. I'm wrong all the time. But I am, I am not going to be betting the Bears on uh, Sunday morning in London. In that bad record for Jacksonville, we are talking about a field goal loss to Miami in Miami to start the season. They somehow lost to the Browns. And now you look at it, you're like, whoa, that looks bad. But you're right. Man, did they fight against the Texans. They probably should have won that game. 
and that was a uh, gotta have it spot. And as far as the Bears, they've played very well at home, very well at home. And now you throw something at them that they have not dealt with before. And Caleb Williams, I'll call it a road game. He hasn't won a road game yet, even though the Bears, they're calling them the, the home team in this game. That doesn't matter, of course. So let me see it. Let me see, it, Caleb. Okay, you're making strides. And let's be real about it. If Campbell's not out there, this is not a tough matchup as far as the Jags defense. Jags defense is dead last EPA per pass in the NFL. So they've they've had a really rough start defending the pass. But it's also worth noting, think about the quarterbacks that I just mentioned. Sometimes it's not who you play, it's when you play them. They went mm -hmm. against Miami when they had to. Uh, they faced Josh Allen. They face C.J. Stroud. Even Flacco, the guy can still sling it. So opposing quarterbacks, besides Watson, this is the uh, easiest quarterback that they face so far. So maybe mm -hmm. uh, they're much closer to average play. I I'm with you. I think Jacksonville's the play. We'll discuss during the contest plays whether it's one of my favorite of the week, but definitely not taking Chicago in this spot. I am with you there. All right, let's keep it moving. We've got Arizona – Green Bay. It looked like we saw a little bit of movement yesterday on this number. Then it ends up coming back. The Packers, it looks like they're getting healthier. You know, it's been a couple weeks now for Jordan Love uh, to return, but you did hear that Luke Musgrave is going to IR. I don't think that's a big deal because Tucker Craft has stepped in and been phenomenal at tight end when they needed it uh, from him. 88 yards last week. Arizona, Ky Kyler and company, big upset win over San Francisco. People were not expecting that one. This borders on trendy, but I thought it was an interesting note that Kyler, after his last 10 straight-up wins, has lost. He hasn't won back-to-back. -back. Last 10 times they've won, the next game they come back and lose. Thought that was uh, an interesting look. This Arizona defense is still not very good. I would say they're probably overall bottom five, bottom six in the league. Offensively, over the last couple of years, they are pretty good at establishing the run in Arizona. The Packers excel at stopping the run. The Green Bay Packers, surprisingly, number three in the NFL in net yards Per play. I think that's a pretty important stat here. So uh, Arizona, Green Bay, a lot of times when you have that number just hanging around five, people don't know what to do with it. They let the market decide on which direction it ends up going. If it moves, what are you doing with Green Bay, Arizona? Just need them to win. That's it. That was one of my lightning yeah. bets yesterday. The Niners and the Packers both to win in a parlay. Feel good about it. And yesterday, after our show, Green Bay's minus four and a half, five. Well, Look at the market now, five and a half, five and a half, five and a half. There's a six in Vegas. They're betting Green Bay as the limits go up. And you know, we were also talking about how some group came in and bet the Patriots yesterday when the limits went up. This is uh, a good spot for Green Bay. Their offensive line is really, really solid. I think they're a top five, top seventh line in the NFL. And the weakest mm. part of the Arizona defense is they don't stop the run. They really struggle against that running game and, and against good offensive lines. So if the Packers can get Josh Jacobs going, it opens up the entire kit for Jordan Love to have success. This is probably the best spot of the season for the Packers. And combine that with the fact that you have an outdoor team or an indoor team rather in Arizona going outdoors in a 50 degree Lambo with the wind it's just, it's a tough spot for Arizona. I'm not going to tell you to lay five and a half when you could have laid four and a half yesterday. Um, not that five is a huge key number in the NFL or anything like that, but it's running to six. I mean, there are, there are sixes in the market right now in expensive five mm -hmm. and a halves. Um, if you have a contest play and you could lay four, four and a half, you might want to do that because you have some CLV. I am, uh, I'm nervous for Arizona here. And I just, I just need the Packers to win. Win by three, win by eight. They're all the same to me. For what it's worth, uh, Green Bay's offensive line ranked third best by PFF, only behind wow. Indianapolis and Detroit. Number three mm -hmm. uh, best offensive line as far as that goes. I'm with you. I'm going to be using Green Bay in Survivor. So 
uh, with a bunch of spots. I think that's the second best option of the week after Philadelphia. I'm skipping those teams that's at, that are already at six and seven. I think Green Bay is the second best option in Lambeau of the week. And I'm interested to see how this uh, Romeo Dobbs things plays out. He was suspended last week. Is this going to bring the team together a little bit? It looked like in the practice field the other day, he's still mad at LaFleur, but I don't think that's going to go through the locker room. I think everybody's going to be like, okay, this is real, man. Hey, we got to take this seriously. I'm not going to get suspended for acting a fool or, or for selfish acts. Cause that's basically what that was all about. He wasn't getting his, he was mad about it. He was vocal about it. And they ended up suspending him because he doesn't show up for practice. All right. Indianapolis at Tennessee for a divisional matchup. You've got the Titans coming off of the bye, and Richardson practiced in full yesterday. So it looks like he's, we'll, we'll get official word coming up in a couple hours, but it looks like it's going to be a Richardson versus Levis matchup and the titans are favored by two and a half a bit of a flip here why yeah richardson's good to go but jonathan taylor's still not practicing michael pittman's going to be out josh down's not practicing cornerback kenny moore uh he was not practicing quitty pay might be ready to go but they're missing a lot of weapons on that colts offense I don't think I'll have a single dollar on this game. And I always, I, hate I always laugh. I hate it. I laugh yeah. when Paul puts the most bet tickets on the rundown. This yeah. is somehow, some way, the most bet over on the board. This is the game they're betting over on 43 what? on Colts. Why? Titans. With I Levis? I don't know. I don't know. And a quarterback that just turns it over, Richardson? That doesn't make any sense to me. Divisional matchup? I don't understand that one at all because it's a low-ish number, 43. I don't get it. I was surprised to see the Titans, but th see, this is under variable, so I throw it out. But I was surprised to see that they are great off the bye. They have been great off the bye. But you got a rookie head coach now. Is it, they're going to be as strong. They, are, they were 8-0-1 off the bye. That is a hell of a run. That's like Andy Reid-level stuff. Uh Levis has been pretty good with extra rest, but I don't trust him for a second. I don't even want to tease the Colts with all these guys out. I don't even want to tease it. It Too many questions. We'll see what the injury Cross report it says, off. but it, it's not looking it good. Off. You don't have to bet every single game. 